second um, item on the agenda and the first Part A request is for the gifting of land for reserve purposes at 160 Bowen Vale Avenue and would you like to move that Phil and seconded by Andrew so would you like to speak to that? Uh, yes, I think um, it, it's a win-win for council and for the family and um, as noted we, we would like to uh, write to the family to thank them uh, uh, for such a, a good offer that yeah, that's a win for everybody. Um, there was some discussion around what would be the best process around purchasing it um, but it does look like there is money available in a fund for making strategic land purchases and it just helps to complete uh, the provision of tracks and public access around Bowen Vale Valley. So, yeah, I urge you to support it. And could we, could we just comment that the staff were most willing to encompass within their current and dropping budgets um, the extra land that was being, in, in, being bought um, without co uh, causing the, co the council any additional costs? We appreciated the staff's commitment. That's great. All right, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. And now we move on to the... Um, uh, item 2.1, the notice of motion. And I did ask that the word disability be removed. Is that possible? Or just to use the word accessible rather than disability accessible? Yeah. Yep. Can we, can we just flick that out? So who's going to move that? Uh, Phil, seconded by Andrew. Right, so um, would you like to speak to that? <laughs> no, Matt, no, Leanne, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, if you were on the Spade and Heathcote Community Board, you'd be um, board witless by my um, frequent ranks, uh, rants about disability accessible, and you can expect uh, more resolutions along the similar lines to be coming. Uh, Helene Mountner and I on the Spray and Heathcote Board are uh, two thirds of the way through an assessment of all the disability car parks in our ward, most of which have one fault or another, and one of which we can praise with a whole heart, and that's New World St Martins. But the rest of them, including City Council car parks, are either obstructed, have been recently painted over, or are in, in the wrong place. But on this one, you will have noticed that in the rebuild, there are many two and three storey buildings that are inaccessible for people with disabilities. They are inaccessible for both employment and for accessing services. They include buildings that are familiar to you, like the Red Cross, where I did a workshop this morning. Um, that organisation cannot employ disabled people, nor can it have service disabled people, because the premises are two storey without access. Um, Many of our streets are full of buildings that are inaccessible to disabled people and a lot of them are new and they include buildings all the way along Morehouse Avenue and Wrights Road where there are carpets being sold and electronic equipment being sold and upstairs there's lawyers and insurance brokers and a lot of other organisations that could be employing people and do employ people but cannot employ disabled uh, people with a disability. Um, we can't do anything about the building code um, at the City Council, though we can make representations to government, and that has been done, but we could set a standard for the whole of New Zealand. Christchurch City Council set an example on nuclear free, and more recently we set an example on fracking. We could say to our citizens that from a date in the future, say five years from now, that those organisations that are not in disability accessible buildings for, service, for services provided or for employment will not receive income or be um, partnered or subscribed to by the Christchurch City Council in terms of donations to the organisation. That would give fair notice to organisations that the City Council expects buildings to be accessible to all its citizens, all of whom pay rates one way or another. At the moment, we, were, we partnered and supported EPIC. EPIC um, uh, requires that people with a disability go in the back door. And it's a long time since we said to sections of our community, minority ethnicities, it's a long time since we said they should be using the back door. 
It's, it, the, it, it is now and from now on in that in a brand new city we should be setting an example. Nuclear fracking, nuclear free and fracking was something that made us feel good and it was an exciting thing to do. But this would be a substantial change in New Zealand if we led the way in saying that from now on buildings had to be accessible to all our citizens. And it would be an example that we could set. And we could set it in a time frame and it doesn't even need to cost the City Council very much money. A question, Phil. Phil. Um, it's just really, Carolyn, to let you know too that recently, just a couple of days ago, the Disability Advisory Group came to talk to the Community Committee and they had some comments very much um, in line with what you're saying and I guess being quite specific too about us as a council. So I, I'm assuming that, and from what our discussions, that in fact while we are asking the, the notice of motion asks for a policy to be set up, mm -hmm. in fact that would need to, need to become very specific with some specific ways to achieve what you're asking for. Oh yes, and I'd rather we had a can-do approach than a why we can't do approach too. Yeah. It was interesting because um, uh, before I was asking about this, uh, the person that approached you about being carried into a court to watch his daughter because mm. the entranceway was a door suspended off the ground and the wire netting fence. And I understand that the community boards worked collaboratively with the owner of the premises in order to get um, a ramp put on, which I think is a fantastic outcome. So yep. Yep. I the think staff member um, responsible has been, has been really um, diligent in doing that. And this is the thing, this is an example of what we can do um, as a proactive council, is we can actually, uh, and if we take this, this stand, and we, um, after getting the right information, et cetera, et cetera, uh, you know, we, that, that's another, we, don't, we won't have to do it piecemeal. You know, this will be a strategic, yeah. um, See, the initial response to that was that when you're coming, let us know and we will find the key and then someone can carry you in, which is kindness itself, but it's mm. not accessibility. No. And they pursued it so that it was something that would be for all. But about a month ago, I, had, I was in the second car in the two-car car parks, the only car parks that are of any use at Pioneer Stadium, unlike the three at the front, which are useless. I was the second car and another person tried to back in to be the third car in the two-car car park. That person could not walk mm. to the back door of the gym. This was his, his only chance to access it. He and I both ended up in tears when we saw the difficulty that he would have if he couldn't have backed in there and had to go and find a car park. He would not have been able to access it. These mm. issues should not... These issues are humiliating to the dignity of human beings. Yeah, I think that often people don't think mm -hmm. at all about mm -hmm. about the consequences. I mean, this this building for people to work in is uh, very accessible, um, has special um, uh, lift access from the car park um, below the building, uh, doors open automatically with um, a touch uh, of a finger um, or their swipe card. Um, again, very aware of um, people who might be using a wheelchair. But, um, and the Chief Executive will, will know this, um, and I hadn't noticed it myself, the citizenship ceremonies are conducted on a platform that doesn't have a handrail, even a handrail, let alone a ramp. Um, and that's something that will change. But it's, it's taken um, you know, somebody in that situation for suddenly to, for the light to switch on. And sometimes it isn't just a question of people wanting to uh, put, put the thing off or make a deliberate decision. It's just not thinking about it at oh, the yeah. front end. Yeah. Can I just say one more thing, which is mm. really boring, but I haven't, you haven't been able to get it into a disabled car park around this building because Hereford Street was blocked off. So I went looking in Worcester Boulevard. The, dis the disability car park, the accessible car park, is the first car park in Wool Worcester Boulevard straight off Durham. So you have to back in to a parallel car park while cars are whooshing in off Durham and you're the person with a disability. It's frightening. Mm. And that was the only car park on Worcester Boulevard that I could access mm. that was for uh, people with a disability. Yeah. And miles away from here, of course. Yeah. Um, Yanni. I just want to say I think it's really good that the board's been 
proactive. Um, I just wanted to reassure you that the new council has been really proactive as well. We've set up for the first time in a long time a committee with terms of reference that includes accessibility and disability. So we are now getting regular reports. We've formalised it with the Disability Advisory Group and we are asking our council staff to report regularly to us over what the disability and accessibility issues are. And I think you'll be pleased to see that some of the work we've identified uh, very early on is around the issue of car parking, uh, and, and in particular the blue, the blue disability car parks, how we can actually transform our existing car parks into being much more accessible. So I just wanted to reassure you that um, this new council is really committed to uh, doing what we can, and I think it's really important to acknowledge that we I have given it a, a visibility that it hasn't otherwise had in recent, recent times. And it would be good to change the title of accessible, the accessible city too. Well, that's, that's not horrible. ours. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had a small go at the st four staff member over there. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I will um, put the motion. All those in favour, say aye. aye. Those opposed, say no. That's carried. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Councillors. And now we will move on to item number.